This is the Dueling Piano Players Podcast, episode 20. You are listening to the number one rated Dueling Piano Players Podcast with your hosts, Joel Randolph and Johnny K. Joel and Johnny invite you to join them online at DuelingPianoSchool.com and get the edge in the Dueling Piano world. And now, here are your hosts, Joel Randolph and Johnny K. Hello and welcome to the Dueling Piano Players Podcast from DuelingPianoSchool.com, where we help you get the edge in dueling pianos. My name is Johnny K. Hey, I'm rock and roll Joel Randolph. Joshua Hamilton. What's up, guys? Hey. Loving life on the Gulf Coast, brother. I bet. It's it's hot. <laughs> well, Willie Nelson stuck up the whole area last night. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I didn't get to go because I had to work, but I thought, now tell me. I don't care if you like country or not, but wouldn't you go see Willie Nelson if he was in the backyard? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Willie's well, probably... they didn't. They didn't. <laughs> 10,000 seat auditorium. Sold like 3,000 tickets. And that affected our show down there. I mean, we had to make changes. Maybe that's a podcast in the future, you know? But How, how to open for Willie Nelson? How to open for <laughs> Willie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I still man. love the palm trees and the geckos. And I'll tell you what, I found these nasty ants that are called cow killers. They're wingless wasps. They're as long as your thumb, and they're bright red. And I'm not going to go into how I discovered them, <laughs> but I'm going to say that life on the Gulf Coast is interesting, y'all. Well, yeah, there's some wildlife down here, I'll tell you what. I mean, I'm not I'm not exactly where you're at, but I know when you get to the south, things are just a little bit... You got big old gecko lizards where you live. Yeah, uh, well, we have lizards crawling around all over the place. Have you seen them, have you seen them do, like, the push-ups? Where then this like this pink thing comes out of their chin like a sail. Yeah, in fact, I saw two lizards the other day doing something that involved push-ups, but one was on the other one's back, and I don't really <laughs> want to get into any details. But that was funny. As long as they're exercising. <laughs> and then they ran off into the bushes, and you can't find. They them. went and sold insurance. All right. What, what does this have to do with dueling pianos? Not anyway? a thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is cold. It's called Except shooting that, you know, the breeze. What I want to talk about, Johnny, today is a, a piano player's mindset. And we've, we've talked a lot about, you know, our mindset and tuning into the audience. And which is, of course, it's paramount in our job. But sometimes, I mean, I know I do. And I've talked with both of you and I, I think you can both feel me. When I say that I don't feel that connection to my audience sometimes, like I'm just there punching the clock. Yeah. And that's going to happen. I think and a lot of us feel that way, uh, probably more often than we should. And it's important to maybe understand exactly what we're doing and uh, why we feel the emotions that we do and m make sure that we're communicating with ourselves properly and everything. So, and I think a lot of that's just based out of fear. But it's an interesting topic, and you sent me a text over the weekend saying, hey, we need to talk about this. And I said, yeah, you know what? Actually, I'd be interested in listening to this podcast, too. Me so too. this is going to be a big one, boys and girls. Uh, strap on your seatbelt for a minute because this one <laughs> might go for a while. Uh, you need, if you need a parachute because it's a long drop from the top. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we're talking about uh, a little bit of fear-based thinking, a little bit of inadequacies and right. things like and, that. And, and, and also... If I could, because, Johnny, you were there alongside me, I mean, during a lot of this, not all of it, but I think all of us, Josh, Johnny, uh, I mean, I speaking for myself, I remember way back when I started and looking ahead into my future 10 years and watching some people who had been in the job, my mentors who had been in it a long time, and they weren't happy. <laughs> and... You know, I, I don't think that's right. This is an awesome job. Our our business is bringing happiness into other people's lives. And these guys weren't happy. And I remember watching that, you know, as long as 10 years ago and wanting to make sure that that's not where I ended up. 
And now I'm to that point uh, now in my career, as far as dueling pianos, where those guys were at that time. And I see as, you know, I, I can understand now the looks on their faces that I used to see. And I think it's an entirely personal situation that you can affect. You have entire control over whether you are happy in your life, let alone this job. Uh, but specifically, we're going to talk about this job. I'm going to leave you to deal with your own life. But you definitely have an option to enjoy this job or not. Well, I'll tell you and, what. About three, four years ago, maybe, uh, when I was still playing in Michigan, I was talking to a good friend of mine, Andy Pazak. And I was just at that point where I was sick of dueling pianos. I was sick of the same old stuff every single night, getting on stage and just felt like there was really no reward in it. And you know what? That was because I was not um, really focused on what I was doing. And um, I, I just told him, you know, man, I can't, I can't stand this anymore. I'm thinking about getting out of it. He goes, what are you talking about? We have the best job in the world. We play everybody else's songs. We get paid very well for it. We get to have a great time every night. It's the only kind of job where you can like drink on the job and be social with people. Right. And I said, and, I said tonight, how many of you all can go into a business meeting Monday morning when the boss tells you, hey, you got to clear your shot glasses off your desk before you come <laughs> in for work? <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot of not a whole lot of opportunity to do that anywhere else, you know, and that's that's the I'm given open, line I'm here. open to suggestions. Well, yeah, sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess the I guess the whole point is. You know, what are you thinking about? What do you think about when you go on stage? And what makes you think that the audience doesn't like you? Because that's what, that's what a lot of it is. You're just not happy in your job or you think the audience isn't going to like you. So, so let's talk about the kind of things that you would well, be thinking about when you get Johnny, on stage. I, I can tell you I've played, I mean, you've known me a long time. We've known each other a long time. And I, but I had a lot of gigs, you know, before we ever met. Uh -huh. And even... After all my years, I, I, I played my first paid gig when I was 15 years old. My mom had to drop me off at the bar because I didn't have a driver's license. And it's, it's been nonstop ever since. It's pretty much all I've ever done. And every night, uh, still, you know, damn near 30 years later, I still feel that nervousness going on stage. What's going to happen tonight? Are these people going to like me? Do I deserve to be up there? You know, I get paid pretty well for being there. Am I going to pull my end of the responsibility? And honestly, what I think about most of the time is that fear, like you brought up. What are they not going to like about me? Am I, am I the dork, you know, in high school, you know? I was the math genius, the computer guy. I was, you know, not the entertainer up front. You know, am I going to be accepted by this audience? And worst of all, am I going to be? Am I going to make any money tonight? Yeah, I, I think I think the same things. I think uh, you know, am I going to enjoy this? Are they going to enjoy this? Is this crowd really into what we're doing? Are we entertaining them? And nine times out of ten, that they already are. But it's crazy to think about that. Me and you would think this way because. I, as I've told you, you're one of the most confident confident players I've ever seen on stage, and people have said the same thing to it's me. And I'm like, it's you, if you had any idea what was going on inside of our heads when you're we were right. actually up there, you know. But we smile and we keep going. And but yeah, I mean, you, you don't know if they're going to think you're a dork or if they're just not going to like what you're doing. If you're not as if you're not adequate, if you're not an adequate performer, or if they're just not going to like the songs you're playing. If you're not going to make any money, I mean, you can be miserable, but if you're making money, well, at least you have something to look forward to. But what if you don't have anything to look forward to? Those are just some of the things that we think about. I always Obviously. think about what happens if the piano breaks or what happens if somebody starts a fight or, you know, whatever. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. Um, and based on the experiences that you have, anything can happen. I can tell you a, a, a very good friend of mine, uh, named Aaron Riddle, and hopefully we're going to have some uh, guitar videos up here because he's just like an autistic genius uh, as far as the guitar is concerned. But also, uh, you know, he and I more or less grew up together in a lot of in a lot of the stuff that that you know we like to talk about. And something that he said to me 
and why this kid should be given another kid advice, but he said it and it mattered was that you are where you are because of who you are. Right. Not, not in spite of who you are. Yes. And, you know, without going into the details of what that conversation was about, how it applies to what we're talking about is that when you're on stage, all those fears that you have, it's too late. You're already there. The show yeah. is on. Show is and, on. So and you you're the guy. It. You're the guy that's doing it. <laughs> right. It's on you. <laughs> it's yep. all over your face. So you may as well <laughs> adapt an attitude that you're the man. And I don't know. I mean, we were t- this conversation that we had was about me going to an audition uh, for a part that I, I really, really wanted. And I got the part and I wasn't able to do it because I was going to be out of the country at the time. And that's a whole different story. But, uh-huh. you know, that that speech of you are who you are and s- as a result of who you are, not in spite of who you are. And that when you walk into that audition or when you walk up on stage to do that show, all those fears, okay, you can deal with that during the day. But now the show is on. Yeah. And you, as the professional, you got to put that away and think about what the audience does enjoy about you, not what they don't enjoy about you. Well, maybe we should address, you know, why you think the thoughts that you think. I mean, first of all, if you're thinking a bunch of bad things, Thoughts, things that are just not lining up with you being a confident and successful entertainer, then where do they come from? Well, they come from nerves and uh, nervousness and maybe just uh, uh, being unprepared. Uh, and I want to share a story with you. I heard Tony Robbins give uh, two different comparisons about. Didn't he uh, teach Jack Black how to make some hot blonde chick look fat or something like that? <laughs> no, no, that was. Quite the opposite, actually. Uh, Shallow Hal's the movie. Oh, 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 right. Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Tony Robbins was uh, talking. I've listened to a lot of Tony Robbins stuff. So I like this kind of human psychology. He's very large. Uh, he's a giant of a man. Uh, he said Carly Simon, he was treating Carly Simon because she was having a hard time getting on stage and performing. And he said he talked to Carly Simon and he talked to Bruce Springsteen. And he said, okay, let me just give you the comparisons of these two stories. He said, Carly Simon says, right before I go on stage, my heart starts pounding in my chest and my hands start shaking and I start sweating a little bit. And, and I, it's when I realize I'm having a panic attack and I can't go on stage. He said, okay, now think about that. And he went and talked to Bruce Springsteen. He said, Bruce, after all these years, you still get on stage and you rock. How do you do it? He goes, oh, I got to tell you, man, I, you know, I, when, right before I get on stage, my heart starts pounding in my chest and my, my hands start shaking and I start sweating. And it's right then that I know I'm ready. And I was like, look at that. That's the exact same feeling that they both have. But she interpreted it as she's having a panic attack and she can't go on stage. And he interpreted it as I have this big adrenaline rush coming and now I'm ready to perform and I'm on. It's a frame of mind. It is. It's all about your mindset. It's about how you communicate with yourself. And that was the bottom line that he was thinking. So um, it's nerves versus knowledge, really. If you want to cut down to it, it's about understanding the feelings that you're getting in your body and knowing what to do with them. They can and that's serve that's really, you. really tough. This is uh, Josh and I, the last couple of weeks, actually, since I got down here and we've been working together every night, have been discussing this topic a lot. And that... Guys, you got to remember that this is just a job and it can suck your whole life up real quick if you let it. But in the end, it's a job. It's a gig. If you've ever flipped burgers or shoveled sand for a living, you understand that you're just at work. This happens to be a job that you can enjoy, but it can also be not enjoyable if you let it. If you decide in your mind to let these evil things overtake you, then that's what you're going to get. And that, and that's what I want everybody to realize what we're talking about today. The bad things, the good things, they're all true. You sitting on the stage at that time, sometime between nine o'clock and two o'clock. And those people are there looking at you to be their entertainment. 
you have to put all that negative stuff aside. Yeah. Uh, and now if you want to call me and talk to me in person about how all that negative stuff is just a lie and it's not true and it's a load of crap and you should never think it in the first place, then we'll do that. But sure. for the purpose of this particular podcast, when you're on stage, the people paying you are paying you to be the man. Mm -hmm. And you are the man or they wouldn't have paid you to be there. So you have to set that outside crap from your life aside. And I'm sorry uh, that you have to go against yourself like that for six hours or whatever, but it's true. And now, that's going to be true no matter what that. job you have. Don't misinterpret that. That doesn't necessarily mean that you still can't think whatever you want to think. I right, mean, right. Especially when dealing with like difficult clients in a bar, you can think, man, this guy is a jerk. I do not like him. But you smile and you shake their hand and you say, thank I know you very much for coming. Name. I took a picture <laughs> of him last night. <laughs> I mean, it's important to remain professional. How people perceive you is how you're going to be representing your business and whether or not they're going to come back. And if you're a likable person, doesn't matter what you think. But the important thing is the thoughts that you think and the feelings that you feel will come out in you eventually. So that's why it's good to maybe shift gears, change channels and whatever you're thinking. But Leave yeah, that stuff you. behind. I can tell you a story about that just last night. I mean, not even 12 hours ago. Do tell. There were, there were audience members that they just pissed me off. Oh, man. And I let them know it. And that's oh. the right thing to do, but I'm telling you that's what I did. See, we're still making mistakes and telling you about Oh, I make them every night. <laughs> and hopefully we talk about them and try and fix them, and all together we'll... Whatever, maybe some of our listeners should start doing podcasts so I can learn from them. But, <laughs> uh, but no, these, these people thought they were going to tell me how to do the show, and I let them know quite clearly that I was in charge and they were not. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then last night, she said, you pissed me off last week. I said, you pissed me off more. Wrong. All right, so I went over, you know, and I told them both. I'm not saying it was the right thing to do, but I told them both exactly what I thought of them. And a man, I was obviously the jerk. These people were just trying to tell me that they like the show. These are, the, you know, and and once I once I settled down and changed my mindset and realized they weren't attacking me, they were just trying to be included. Yeah. At, you know, and I sat and talked with them, and we ended up having drinks. And that was those people you talked about earlier. You can't say, you know, <laughs> screw up, and they buy you drinks. Right. That was that was those people. And uh, I get it wrong a lot, but yeah. I want everybody to understand. You, Johnny, you, Josh, me, Joel, and any of you listening, you control the mindset of your audience. And if you're yes. a jerk then your audience is a jerk and you're going to feel like being an asshole. Don't bleep that. Out. You're going to feel like that. Don't do it. Don't watch my show because I'm going to do it. And <laughs> don't use that. <laughs> but don't do, do what we say, not what we do. Right. I mean, I've been, and it's, it's, it's helped a lot. Last night was an example of me I mean, that was <laughs> I actually did pretty good considering my history of handling those people. And it worked out for the best. And it just goes to prove exactly what we're talking about today. Your mindset on stage, please stay positive. You know, yes. watch what you're doing. Follow, you know, if you if you come into work and you've been fighting with your girlfriend that day or your wife or your boyfriend or your landlord or whatever, Man, I'm sorry, but you got to put that aside when you go on the stage. Those people that built your roads and your house, they need you to be a happy man that night. Yeah, there's no carry-ons on stage. You got to check your baggage at the door. Man. Yeah, right on. For six right. bucks for peace. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Man, be be happy. For one, you will be happier. For two, that's your job. You were paid to make these people be happy. So if you're not, screw that. you got to put right. that aside. But I promise you, if you can find that place in your head to be positive about what's going on. And remember, 
These people like me and they need me to be happy for them. Mm-hmm. Leave that or at least I seem can't. happy. You just need to seem happy at least. Well, you know, yeah, and that's a. I tell people they say, you know, great job. I always say, you know, I was just pretending. They, they <laughs> funny, but that's not a joke. And no. and when you're feeling those emotions on stage, your anger or your mistrust or your lack of self confidence, uh, be sure you're communicating with yourself what it is that you actually mean to communicate. Um, you're feeling energy. You're feeling energy from yourself and from your audience. And, you know, sometimes that can be overwhelming. I don't, I mean, I've, I've done music a lot of times and I've played in front of an audience of 3,000 people or more. And when they're just rocking with you and you have 3,000 people jumping up and down at the motion of your hand because of the tune that you're playing and it's just a moment, there is nothing like that. But you can do that same thing with four people. Yeah. In the crowd or 400 people in the crowd. Yeah. But the thing is, you're going to feel that energy. And if you interpret it negatively, you will return it negatively in your show. No, that's if absolutely you, true. If you interpret it positively, uh, then you'll re- interpret, you will return it positively. The thing is to remember the audience is always positive. Even when you think they're being negative, that's just because they don't know how to say it better. Yeah, a good example of that is when you're taking song requests or whatever, and people just start shouting out songs, and it's not that they're trying to be jerks, although that's the way I see it very often. Sometimes yep. I just want to say, people, shut up, just one at a time, but they're trying to be a part of the show. They're trying right. to give you their ideas, and they don't know if you're going to go, oh, man, what a great idea, and like single them out of the crowd, and now they're going to feel like they're the most important person in the room. So that's why they do that kind of thing. They're not trying to be mean. They're just trying to be a part of the show, which is what Dueling Pianos is. It's an interactive show. So it's important to communicate with yourself properly. And, in fact, part of that, uh, for me, came about recently over the last month uh, as I started talking to Josh a little more. I found Josh's blog. And, uh, Josh, I don't exactly remember the way you worded it, but I really liked the way you worded about how – Whatever's happening in my life right now is because this is the perfect time for it in my life. How, how did you talk about that? Um, that's really just, you know, uh, dealing with things that you might not think uh, you, you know, are is anything that you want to be involved in or something that you might perceive as bad happening to you uh, can really just be. Uh, you can take it as a lesson or you can turn it around and say, you know, if. You know, it, like going for something that you want. If you want something and you don't have it yet, there's probably a reason for that. And all you have to do is understand that where you are is is where you're supposed to be. And if you were supposed to be somewhere else, then you'd probably be there. So just be where you are. That's and pretty awesome. That, I, mean, I just kind of took that idea and, and ran with it. One of the, One of the other things I wanted to add, too, was that... In those small audiences, a lot of times it's very hard, especially when your monitor is up high or the sound system is up high or you're playing in a big room and it's very spread out to hear feedback from the audience. Sometimes they'll say it really quiet or they'll clap very softly. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to know that they are having a good time, even if they're not jumping up and down as much as we are. Right. And to them, you know, they are, they are out of their skin and they are, you know, really, really excited. And to us, it just doesn't seem that they're excited because we don't see the movement or we don't hear it from them. But one of the things that, that pointed that out to me was that I made a video of myself and Paul uh, playing. Was that after you read my article about watching yourself and how you need to video? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So uh, I watched that video, and that the camera was out in the audience. The, yeah, the right? camera the camera was set up uh, behind a bunch of a bunch of tables and a bunch of people. But to us, it's it seemed like a slow night, 
I came in and I, I didn't feel very good about the night. I didn't feel very good on stage. And I came back and I watched the video. And first of all, our performance was way better than I thought that it was. That's an important thing to remember too. <laughs> and, and well, it's important to remember both. It's important, you know, it's just important to pay attention mm -hmm. to me. It, 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 you have to notice when you may not be doing a good job. And you have to notice when you are doing a good job because both are, are very important. But when, when I went back and watched the video, I could hear all of the audience murmuring, you know, pretty much under their breath. Murmur, murmur, murmur. About. Murmur, murmur. <laughs> about, Cattle, oak, rhubarb, cabbage. <laughs> about how they beats. really love the show. Nobody likes beets. <laughs> and uh, they, they, were, they were excited to be there and they were clapping softly and they were, they were laughing at the jokes. But not once that whole night. Did I hear any of that on stage? I, yeah. I, you know, and so it's important to understand a lot of times, you know, even if your audience isn't, isn't, you know, jumping up and down with excitement, if they're sitting there watching you, it, chances are they're having a pretty good time. Yeah. So that was, that was something that I had gone through. Well, that's that self-communication of, you know, listening. Well, first of all, listening hopefully to this, these podcasts and to other schooled players or, or seasoned players that, that tell you stuff. Um, you got to remember that what you feel on stage, I mean, first of all, you're doing a job, so you have to do what you're paid for. Right. But secondly, we all take this personally. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and hearing a story from Josh, like he just told that, is absolutely true and hopefully our listeners will have something that they can identify with that is true with this but if you don't you need to understand that even if it's not true even if everybody in the audience hates you which is not true but even if they do when you're on stage it's too late you're yeah. already at work right you have to take that emotion that you're feeling that adrenaline and turn it into a positive show. And if you can just listen to us experienced guys tell you that that audience loves you, they do. Even if you don't feel like it, that's probably your own damn fault. Right. But, but even so, you need to snip that off and turn you know, into a happy guy. I, I, I got a really good story that I just thought of uh, after Josh was talking about how quiet the crowd was. I mean, there's many nights that you get in there and the crowd may love you more and do very little than a crowd who's absolutely crazy and shouting out every single song. And, and they don't even remember being there. And they don't, even, yeah. And here's the example I got. Who are the guys that went to the moon? Lance Armstrong and Buzz Lightyear or something like that? <laughs> uh, sure. uh, Neil Armstrong. Uh, to infinity, uh, Buzz Aldrin. Uh, they went to the I moon and, and they came back and they got, and they met the president and they had a ticker tape parade and all this stuff and it was like just the time of their life and they they were treated for depression for several years after that because if you have to go to the moon to experience an extreme amount of joy and excitement in your life, then when you get back, there's nothing on earth that's ever going to compare to that. So the point he was trying to make is you got to be able to find that same excitement and that same uh, love or appreciation in the smaller things as well, not just the big things. So if you need a big energetic crowd to turn you on and to get you going, then the little crowd that's only got two people in it that really do appreciate you even more than the big crowd does, that, that's never going to do it for you. You've got to be able to turn it on yourself. It is about how you communicate with yourself. So you got to be able yeah. to interpret these feelings appropriately and be able to appreciate the small things. Otherwise, the big things are not, you know, that's the only and, thing that's going to matter. And you're always going to be shooting for that. You'd be chasing a dragon. Chasing a dragon. Well, I know that story. I got one on my arm right now. And you guys tell me if you can appreciate, because I know I've had, I've had a, a little more different experiences in the music business. But, you know, I've been a, a singer in a rock band and toured the country. And I'm playing 3,000 seat venues wherever 
just rocking out. Hey, I suggest you all give it a shot. Talking about from playing for four people to playing to 400 people to playing to 4,000 people. And I have done all of that. And I'm telling you that that magic, when you have 4,000 people loving on you, that is awesome. But when you have four people loving on you, that is awesome. Yeah. And it's a skill. I'm not going to tell you that you just walk in there and do it. But in the end, you just walk in, in there, there and, and do it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it has to be with your interpretation of yourself on the stage. If you are comfortable with yourself on that stage, then those people will like you. Yep. They showed up. They wanted to like you. They paid way too much for drinks. They paid way too much for their food. They paid, you know, 10, 20 bucks to just even just come to in the in. door. They like you already. They're there. They better. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They came so, to see you. You didn't go see them. So, you know, right. appreciate it's that a, already. It's a point of view, and it's something. Now, if you know me personally, you're going to know this is a lie. But I'm going to tell you, don't take that to be a jerk. <laughs> Don't don't be the cocky guy that's up there and I run this whole thing and I'm the man. Um, but on the flip side of that, do that. Be that guy. You are there, as my buddy said, you're there because of who you are, not in spite of who you are. Those people showed up for a show and you're the guy that has to give it to them. So now if on your off time you feel you have stuff to work on, then do that. But between nine and two or whatever times, you're the man. And you need to remember that. And the stuff we talked, we've been talking about. And there's more to come, I hope. Yeah, to and tomorrow the sun's going to rise and a new day is going to start. And yeah. you get to do it all over again. I mean, right. it will end. It will die. And people will only remember the good stuff. They won't really remember the bad stuff. The world forgives and forgets very easily. They only care about... What good are you doing now? So whatever problems that you're bringing in or that you think you have, remember, they're all going to go away. You're going to have a whole new set of problems tomorrow, and you won't even care about these problems. So now I can tell you I talked about a while ago watching the guys that have been in the business for a long time and seeing where they were unhappy and trying to devise a way to not be that unhappy. I know. Uh, you know, and, and so I'm to that point, and but I've also seen people that are very happy in the business, and as players. Now, again, we're not talking to the audience members. If you're an audience member and you're listening to us, please shut the podcast off now. This is not for you. This is for the players. We should have said that 40 minutes ago. Well, uh, you can cut and paste. Yeah. So we uh we uh man, buddy, this is a job. And it's going to pay your bills like nothing else will for you. And if you haven't gone through this phase yet, you will. Oh, yeah. We're deciding, I'm an artist, and I don't like this, and and whatever crap you <laughs> make up for a reason you don't like this job. Um, buddy, go do what you got to do. But uh, don't do it. Well, oh, you'll be booking yourself back at that piano bar the next day, the second you go well, get a job at I McDonald's. Mean, <laughs> it's, 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 that's, that, I mean, that's, that's an important part. It's a thing you can do. And to learn this job, you can do it. And this podcast is not so much about how to do this job. This podcast is more about how to still be a human being while doing this job. And I'm always going to preach that you need to do what you feel you need to do. But if you think you can't do it by doing this job, I'm... I'm sorry, you just missed the point, and you don't you don't understand what your life is about. You can uh, you can do it because you already are doing it. So you, don't forget that. Ah, this is this is the thing. Once you learn it, you can always do. Right. And this job is forgiving and forgetful, and you can quit it and come back to it as much as you want. It'll be here. In the meantime, we'll be kicking it on the beach, making all the money while you're gone. You know, see I mean, you right on. Come party with me. I can afford to buy your drinks. Hey, but, uh, you know you what? Know, wanna, speaking of which, actually, I wanted to talk about something before we were completely wrapped up. Um, 
you know, I don't know, when did we kick this off? We started somewhere in around February. We really launched the site in March. It's only been three months. and It was kind of just a joke. Well, to it, begin with. yeah, I mean, it, we didn't really know what to do. To learn how to type stuff on a computer. Yeah, we just wanted to have something uh, for yeah. your guys that you were training and uh, for uh, some other people. We figured, well, maybe we can help other people at the same time. And I want you guys to know that uh, the 20 bucks a month that you're shelling out to uh, get these modules and everything, it's not making us rich. In fact, we haven't even broken even yet from the uh, w when you add up what the site costs to run and uh, the equipment that we bought to uh, make the podcast and do the videos and all that. The, the 500 some dollars that I flew to rally for, we're going to try to use all the money that comes in on the site so that we can hook up with you guys, maybe fly out and hang with you for a weekend and watch you I play. I would love to come play at some of your clubs, or at least just show up and be an obnoxious jerk in the audience. We, we'd love to meet you guys. And we, we, you know, we're not doing this for the sake of, you know, we're, we just want to make a bunch of extra money. This is actually helping us too. We listen to these podcasts. We listen to ourselves talk and we go, wow, we should listen to that more often because we said some good stuff in there. So we're not just helping you guys out. We're helping ourselves out. And, um, you know, uh, we hope you guys appreciate, you know, everything that we're doing every week, that at least that we're and trying hey, to bring it. You know. And, hey, what up? How come we haven't heard from some of you? Some of you we've heard from. And we've gotten lots of great stuff to propagate. There's a word you never woke up and thought you'd say in a sentence. <laughs> I've still never said it. Don't. Um, it's it's hurtful. Well, I've but, Jimmy kid's been giving us a lot of feedback. We really appreciate it, Jimmy. He's got a he's been writing some emails and he's got a lot of good things to say and it's been really nice to hear from him. So thanks a lot for that, brother. I've heard back from Ty. I've heard back from Troy. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of pros that you guys hey, if you don't know these guys, Get to you know need them. to just say hey and what's up to them. Yeah. yeah, that's why that forum is there, so you guys can start uh, networking with each other so we can network with you too but you know otherwise we're just kind of texting each other so you know start striking up some conversations in the forums and you know feel free to ask questions about these podcasts and about the modules and about the videos that you see uh, because it, it's going to help everybody in the long run and that's what we want to do we want to you know make sure that we get a good group of guys together because one day we may come looking for you we may want to build our own team of really hey, that's awesome not a, that's, that's not a joke johnny i'm having a meeting this week with yeah. the ceo of the company i work for and we're going to be talking about uh my dueling piano army yes. that i want to build and that's all of you that are listening to this podcast right now that's you guys that's you guys yep. you saw that you saw the pictures of the check that we put up there yeah that wasn't and, fake that and was you, for real those and, jobs are happening all the time and i need people that I know, understand what I'm talking about, to take on those jobs with me. Johnny needs people when he gets hired to take with him on yeah. those jobs. Yeah, I'm sick of turning down gigs, man. I get gig calls every week, and I just I can't do them all. So it would be nice to actually have somebody that's looking for work to throw those to, you know, and sometimes it works out. But, you know, right now it would be nice to go out with some of these guys and go do a gig and meet some of these cats, and everybody's right got on. something new to bring to the table. And, you know, if you don't think we're serious about this, well, this is how Joel and I met. And Josh is sitting right there next to Joel in Alabama. He's a perfect example of this really works, and we are building this big team together. So keep that in mind, you guys. And um, uh, what do we want to uh, close out with here? Do we want to talk about my my uh, satanic messages and my reverse app? <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, we'll, we'll post those. Y'all can, if you're, if you're into that, you can burn some incense and cut a goat. The iPhone some. has a really cool app called iReverse Speech. You can I just say speak you. into it, and then you hit the reverse button, and it'll play it back to you backwards. And we were looking up all these YouTube videos and everything of, like, hidden satanic messages. So we we're, we're going to leave post you. That on the site. Do we get, like, two cents every time somebody downloads that? Maybe more if we say, give us your money. <laughs> Do it. Why not? Give, if give we say it backwards. Some... Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, let's try. Listen, what I, what I want, what I want everybody to take money. away from this, first and foremost, you set your own success. If you stay positive, I mean, whether you are doing dueling pianos or whether you're painting walls, 
or if you're cooking fish sticks, mm, I'm be hungry. positive. Be positive. If you have evil thoughts in your head, then your life will have evil thoughts in it. And when you apply that to dueling pianos, all the stuff we talked about, when you think that audience is attacking you, uh, you have to man up. You have to be the one that says, no, they love me. They're just a jerk about right. the way they said it. Right. That I, I can't, in all of our podcasts ever, that's what I want to convey. Please keep your head in the right direction because if you, once you decide, once you decide that that's a bad place to be, you've done it for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's right. Even yourself, most of all yourself. Why would you do that to yourself? Stay positive, be professional, earn that money that they hired you for. They want you there. You, they wouldn't have hired you if you weren't doing a good job. Do that good job. And most of all, when that audience is telling you that they love you, let them yes. love you. <laughs> Don't take it the wrong way. What are you, gay? No, that's not what they mean. And remember, yeah. Uwe spells the siege, Uwe Velia. <laughs> what? <laughs> Play it backwards. You'll hear it. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Stay positive, brothers and sisters. That's right. Yeah. One message to you forever from now and beyond dueling pianos or teaching math or shoveling gravel. Give, make it an upbeat, positive show, guys. An upbeat, positive show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Don't, don't tell them about that. Oh, I'm not no, going to say nothing no, else about hey, it. If you're listening to us, you know who that is. <laughs> That is, and we don't consider have to... that a compliment because that was some of the best advice yeah. I ever got in this business. Love right. you, buddy. Well, hey, that, that's about it for today, man. This is the, lo this is the longest podcast today. And hey, 20 episodes of the no Doing Piano Never Players happened. Podcast. Woo! Take a shot of Red Stag. All right, we're taking the next three months off, you guys. We'll see you later. No, I'm just kidding. We'll be back here again <laughs> next week. But, but hey, 20 episodes. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice milestone. For the Dueling Piano Players podcast, still number one on iTunes when you type in Dueling Pianos. Guess it's who shows true. up first? It's true. It is, it is. Hey, Dave Pusikowski, you're going to be on the next podcast. I hope you've been listening, brother. We're going to call you, okay? Uh, <laughs> but that should be fun, too. Hey, uh, I guess that's it for now, you guys. We'll see you next time. Josh, Joel, always a pleasure. Right on, right. brother. See you later. See you guys later on, and don't forget to check us out, everybody, DuelingPianoSchool.com. We'll see you next time. You have been listening to the number one rated Dueling Piano Players podcast. Join us now online at DuelingPianoSchool.com and get the edge in the Dueling Piano world. Hey guys, this is Johnny. Real quick at the end here, I just wanted to say uh, sorry about the audio quality of this podcast. The information was still good. We really wanted to give it to you, and uh, we felt like we were really in a zone about everything that we were talking about. But as you can tell, uh, the audio quality from both my end and Joel and Josh's end was subpar. It's not really what we want, and what we're trying to do is get a couple of better usb microphones to plug in there today but it sounded like we were both using uh laptop microphones well that's indeed what happened today and uh it it is kind of harsh to listen to sometimes but uh we are working on that problem and next time uh, we hope to provide you with a little bit better sounding podcast but we just wanted to say sorry about the audio quality and um keep listening because the information is good and we want to make sure you get the edge in the dueling piano world thanks a lot everybody see you next time